Gals, it's Steph with Tiny's Garden. Welcome back today. We are going to discuss selecting for double blooming stock with your baby stock seedlings. Here is my tray that I planted on February 25th. Today is now March 8th, and it's time for me to go through this tray and select for double blooms. What does that mean? In stock, you have single blooming stock and you have double blooming stock. Here's a clip from last year's stock in my garden. The lavender one is a double and the lower right hand side, the maroon is a single. So most flower farmers or people in flower production tend to prefer the double blooms because they're fuller and some people think they're prettier, but other people are just fine with growing the single blooming ones as well. So it really depends on your preference. If you're selling to a florist, more than likely they're going to only want the double blooms. So it's things like that to think about whether you wanna take the time to go through and call out the singles or not. Last year was my first year growing stock and I grew all of them. I didn't go through and try and separate them. A, I was new to it and didn't care enough to try and separate them. I just wanted to grow them. B, I was gonna take whatever I could get. So I do think the singles are fine. I think they're pretty, but I am gonna go through this year and just do the doubles because I'm going to dabble in more arrangements this year and I do see how they stand out a little better being a double bloom for that purpose. There's a few different ways you can determine what is a single blooming stock and a double blooming stock. And I'm getting this information from Johnny Select Seeds, their stock production guide. I highly recommend going to their website and downloading it to scroll through it. It's an excellent resource and gives great details on all of this. So do yourself a favor and make sure you go there right after this. I'll put a link down below. But one of the ways you can determine the difference, and this way I struggle with, to be honest, I don't really see a huge difference, is the color of the actual seedling. So double blooming stock are lighter in color than the single blooming stock. I don't notice a huge difference. Pretty much the tray looks the same to me. So let's go to the next one. And this is the one I think is the most helpful. So listen up. Large oval cotyledons are double blooming blooms. That if the cotyledon is fused or is in a regular shape, that's more than likely a single bloom. And I can see that for sure. A cotyledon is the first set of leaves that come on your seedlings and you'll definitely be able to tell a difference. Let's come look at the tray so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, here's my tray. We've got excellent germination. Now if we zoom in here and take a look, so here on this side, nice and oval cotyledons on each side. Here on this one, fused and fused. They're not separated. They also say double flowering seedlings are faster germinating and faster growing, and that the single blooming cotyledons are smaller. But those are all things I don't notice as much as I can really see the difference between a fused cotyledon and ones that are regularly large, oval, very two distinct parts cotyledons. Take that what you will, use what works best for you, and let's get down to thinning these out. I'm gonna grab a pencil real quick because as I look through this tray, there's a lot of fused cotyledons and even some that are only fused within one cell. I wanna make sure that I don't lose that cell's real estate, so I'm gonna transplant some double blooms into those which will be very soon empty cells so I'm not losing space. Okay, taking my scissors, Coming down in here, that big one is a fused cotyledon. So I'm gonna come in and cut. This one down here, come in and cut because those are deformed. And if they have deformed cotyledons, those are also indicative of single blooms. And here is a cell where I've got two double flowering blooms so I'm going to transplant one of those into a empty cell as soon as I find one. This cell right here fused fused so I'm gonna come in and get both of them a cut. 
Now I'll show you how I'm gonna transplant one of those double blooming ones into the single cell. Here's our single cell right here. I'm gonna make a hole in there. Take one of these out. I'll take the one that's toward the side. Reach down in there with my pencil and pull up. And you can see the root is right there, hanging down from it. Put that right into here using my pencil to help. And pushing down. And then covering back up. And there we go. So now I'm gonna go through and do the whole tray and I'll meet up with you right after. I should mention, as I'm going through, I'm keeping an eye out for cells that have more than one. These three up here are all three double blooming. I'm gonna keep them there until I find a free cell that I can transplant two of these into. Otherwise, I'm thinning to one. Empty one opened up right here. So I'm gonna transplant one of these from the top. Make a hole. And right in it goes. And tuck it back up. The pencil really helps make it a seamless transition. Here's another cell right here. We've got two fused ones. Cut those out. Transplant one with a single. And right in with the root. There we go. Another example here of a fused cotyledon. If it looks like it's one big thing, that means it's fused. And both of these are fused. Transplant another double. Four, five holes to fill with a double. Okay, let's take a look at my tray now up close to see about only one seedling per cell. I did keep a few doubles in there, two in one cell because I do have more trays to go through. So if I come up on an empty cell, I'll be able to switch one of those over. Otherwise, at the end of the day, I will cut and thin everything down to one seedling per cell. And here you can see much more room for all these little seedlings and only double flowering blooms left based on the size of the cotyledon and if it's deformed or not or fused or not. And that'll do it for this video. I hope that this was helpful in figuring out how to select specifically for double blooming stock. Stock's a beautiful, fragrant flower. It is also edible actually as well. So I highly recommend growing it in your garden. And I'm looking forward to a nice big crop of double blooming stock. Please comment below if you have any tips or tricks on selecting for stock that I have not covered. I'd love to hear your ideas. And please subscribe to my channel to follow along here with All Things Garden. I'd love to have you here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!